Uh, hello, everyone. Thank you, John. Thank you, uh, Stephanie. And many thanks for the for for the invitation at the at the summit. I'm more than really happy to be to be here um, and to talk about uh, cross check. And uh, before uh, start, all my apologies for my probably very strong French accent, and I hope you'll understand everything. So, um, sorry, had a few problems with my notes. <laughs> Here it is, sorry. So, in January 2017, we were there. Uh, there was a global rise of disinformation since the uh, UK's Brexit and uh, US election, and you all know that very well. Um, in France, uh, we were waiting for probably the most uh, high-stakes political content in decades uh, in, in the country. There was a lot of, uh, of suspense because of the sudden and very unexpected rise of uh, Emmanuel Macron. We had also a very strong far right with uh, Marine Le Pen and the fall of the traditional political parties. We, have also, we had also a further ground for uh, disinformation. Uh, some terrorist attacks twice in Paris, then in Nice. We had uh, long-standing economic issues, uh, very strong and powerful anti-immigrant uh, discourse and low trust in media. Uh, just to let you know, trust in French media is among the lowest in, uh, in Europe with a 30% approval rate. A lot of people think uh, French journalists are under strong influences uh, uh, of economic and political forces. And as everyone in the world, uh, social media use, particularly for consuming news, is constantly rising. That's why we launched uh, CrossCheck, a collaborative journalism project to fight disinformation in the last weeks uh, leading up to the French presidential election. I said we launched CrossCheck, but uh, the original ID uh, did not come uh, from uh, the French journalist, but from first draft that you all may know, and uh, particularly Jenny Sargent. Because uh, there was a lot of skepticism uh, among my colleagues, even if they were uh, more than ready to collaborate. Uh, collaboration isn't natural between journalists. But Jenny Sargent was so enthusiastic and persuasive, she put so much in so much energy that she managed to get more than 30 French media on board on this project. I really want to thank her and to underline how important it is to have a, a strong project manager, as Jenny uh, was, in that kind of project involving uh, so many people, so many uh, newsroom and, and media. And I must also uh, thank the Google News Lab in Paris obviously, which gave us uh, facilities and notably uh, uh, financial resources to recruit some uh, interns coming uh, from uh, one of the best school of journalism uh, in France. Things goes, <coughs> sorry, very quickly. Uh, you can see here the main steps of the, of the launching. Uh, we launched CrowdCheck in seven weeks. Uh, after the first meeting where the ID emerged. Uh, the two-day boot camp in February uh, was a very, very important moment. Every newsroom sent uh, one or two journalists to the boot camp, and it gave uh, everyone, every journalist, uh, strong knowledge on verification, debunking, and fact-checking. Uh, there were a lot of people really unfamiliar uh, with the basics of uh, verification, but they learned a lot uh, with great people like, uh, maybe you know a few of them, uh, Sandra Berlet from Amnesty International, Aliom Leroy from the great Bellingcat web, um, Tom Trevinar, who will, who will be soon on stage with us uh, from Midden, uh, uh, Patrick Wall, uh, who is a fact checker on Channel 4 in England, 
uh, Jenny Sargent from First Draft, and also uh, great people from uh, Google, Protangle, and, and Newsweek. And during this bootcamp, uh, the people also learned, learned sorry, to know each other, and uh, that was a really good start for the, the project. Then there was a, a press conference in Paris to mark the official uh, launch, uh, and journalists were very curious about this really unidentified and uh, unique project, and uh, notably the Russian media. Uh, here on the, on the picture, you can see Jenny in red, uh, then from left to right, Adrien Seneca from uh, Le Monde, Clémence Lemestre from Les Echos, uh, the French uh, uh, daily uh, financial newspaper, uh, Derek Thompson, who is American, but working for uh, France 24 and, uh, and myself. So that was an experiment, and we had a lot of questions. Here are, uh, on, the, on the screen grab, are all the, with the logos, here are all the media, school of journalism and tech companies uh, involved in the project. Some of them are really famous, at least in France, uh, as uh, uh, IFP, uh, My Media, Agence France Presse, which is, uh, if you don't know, uh, it's like the, the, the French Associated Press, but uh, uh, worldwide. We are working in uh, six languages. Uh, there was also Le Monde, which is maybe the most famous uh, uh, French uh, daily. Uh, France 24, the international uh, French TV. Liberation, or uh, West France, uh, which is the biggest uh, local newspaper uh, in France. And in a very centralized country like France, it was very important to have some local media among us. Because a lot of people uh, in France uh, would trust less and less media, however, are still confident in local newspaper. So it was very, very important uh, to us uh, to have some, some uh, local media. But we had also some uh, small media outlets, like uh, Explicit or uh, Rue 89 Bordeaux. They didn't have a lot of resources, but they were very uh, enthusiastic. So, before starting, we had three big questions. First, uh, newsroom. Will they be able to support additional work? Uh, a lot of newsrooms are suffering due uh, notably to the, to the lack of uh, human resources. Journalists, will they be able to work together? Because on a daily basis, uh, journalists are in a competition. Then, uh, readers, would they be able to trust a new brand? Uh, no one have, uh, have ever heard about Crosscheck in France, a new brand with an English name in France. And with only 10 weeks left, <laughs> will we be able to have a, a bit of visibility in a landscape already uh, uh, fully overloaded of, uh, of information? Honestly speaking, I was really enthusiastic and uh, motivated but we had all these questions. And we also knew that, uh, for example, an early mistake could have ruined the project's uh, reputation from the beginning. Uh, so this really could have been an epic fail. But fortunately, it works. <laughs> yeah, that was a, a success. Uh, here is your screen grab uh, of the cross-check website, which was uh, uh, in French and English, uh, with one maybe of the most famous and quite sophisticated hoax that circulated during the, the campaign uh, regarding a non-existent offshore account in the Bahamas belonging to uh, 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 Emmanuel Macron, a story that we debunk uh, quickly. Sorry. And I really want to, to, to highlight one thing, to underline one thing, is that we made no mistakes. In, uh, in a project where you are uh, talking about uh, fact-checking, debunking, verification, it's important. Uh, 67 articles were published in 10 weeks uh, in French and English, even if uh, the vast majority of the audience uh, was coming from, uh, from France. And uh, so no mistakes, and as you saw later, a very, very uh, positive feedback, even if uh, everything was not perfect, uh, obviously. Let's talk about the, the workflow. So, uh, step one. Newsroom and journalists, uh, journalism students uh, monitoring, uh, were monitoring social media to identify cases of disinformation that were starting to create a buzz or already viral. Uh, we had two, two powerful uh, tools, Crowdtangle and uh, Newsweek, uh, both powerful to detect viral hoaxes and uh, 
they were, yes, really useful, giving us relevant metrics like the total amounts of uh, shares on uh, various pages and accounts, or how false stories were spreading on, on social media, how fast they were spreading. And the public had, uh, had also the opportunity to ask a question on the website uh, with uh, Arkham, which you may know, and that gave us a strong connection with the, with the audience and also allowed us to maybe detect some more relevant and uh, original uh, stories. Step two, um, as soon as a story was uh, worth a debunk, um, the, verific uh, sorry, the verification card uh, powered by, by check allowed us to clarify, to structure and collaborate about the verification process. Then we had some discussions and exchanges on Slack. Uh, Slack was really the place uh, for uh, collaboration, where everyone involved in the project could speak up. Uh, depending on the matters, we had sometimes very short conversations with uh, everyone agreeing, and sometimes very long debates uh, for days and days. We all spent a lot of uh, uh, a time on Slack. But on that, I really want to underline that uh, even with dozens of uh, journalists, we never had strong disagreements with, for example, uh, someone threatening uh, to leave the, the project. Step three, when the verification process was uh, concluded, uh, Journalists added their media's logo to endorse uh, a story. As you see here, there is someone from AFP on the screen grab asking uh, for endorsement from other media about uh, a story that we, we've debunked. And we needed uh, at least two endorsements to publish the story on the, on the website. Then we uh, write the story and we really insisted on short and ambiance articles giving context and background. And no judgment, nor irony, nor lessons of journalism that to the readers that could give uh, them the impression that they are dumb, uh, and, uh, and really they are not. Uh, labeling was also an important step. Uh, as you see, there were six uh, categories here. Um, because as you all know, oxies are not only doctored photos or fake websites, but more often misattributed or uh, out of context uh, information. In that matter, the most viral hoax was uh, a video taken out of context, showing a man violently uh, eating woman uh, that was viewed more than 15 million times and shared more than 210,000 uh, times on Facebook. Several pages uh, associated with the far right in France claim that video uh, showed a migrant assaulting nurses in an hospital in France. That was a manipulation because this video, uh, viewed than more than 15 million times, was from Novogorod in Russia and involved a drunk uh, attacking two nurses. That was not in France. Um, and in this particular example, what is interesting is that kind of uh, disinformation spreads between countries, uh, often changed or uh, adapted to fit the local context. Because after France, um, a Turkish Facebook page, for example, claimed that this video showed a Russian man uh, attacking a female doctor in an hospital in Turkey. Then in Spain, uh, some social media users, however, claimed that it was a, a Muslim person attacking a nurse in a Spanish health center. Everything of the, every interpretation is fault that was in Russia with a drunk. Then um, final reviews uh, were made by, by uh, sorry, were made by my team in Paris because like in every uh, newspaper or website you need it for the uh, global editorial Koreans or, or just typos. Uh, here, there's another screen grab uh, of uh, the debunk of a uh, quite sophisticated and clever hoax uh, with a clone of a, a famous uh, Belgian daily, uh, Le Soir, uh, claiming that Emmanuel Macron's campaign was financed by Saudi Arabia, quoting an IFP story. 
but that was quite easy to debunk because uh, this story was never right, written by uh, IFP. I highlighted here with the arrows, uh, red arrows, the, the media logos which endorse the story because uh, as we, uh, we will see later, this is uh, very important to give credibility. Uh, then, uh, last step, uh, our stories were uh, then shared multiple times on Twitter and Facebook or be published by uh, participating uh, newsrooms on their own platforms, uh, crediting uh, cross-check, of course. So now let's talk about uh, the impact of cross-check. First of all, uh, what is going to, to follow NCOs from my own experience uh, during the 10 weeks of cross-check, but also from a really interesting report uh, made by three French uh, researchers, Sophie Chauvet, Nico Smirnaios, and Emmanuel Marty. Um, you can download this report on the, uh, for free, of course, uh, uh, you can download this report on the First Drop uh, uh, website. So um, it was this, a success for the participants, uh, and I can, I can assure, you, assure you, sorry, that everyone um, of them was very proud of the of the project. Um, yeah, decisions were taken collectively. Uh, we had uh, a lot of exchanges through multiple uh, Slack channels, and as I said before, we never had, we never had strong disagreements, only debates, uh, with everyone benefiting from the. The, the various expertise uh, available. No correction had uh, also to be issued. And even if there were uh, sometimes a bit of frustration because the publishing process was a bit slow, you know, we had to wait for the media endorsements, for example, uh, everyone agreed that cross checking, the cross checking process, uh, while slower than uh, uh, traditional reporting, uh, resulted in high quality journalism. Then we had open dialogue between journalists from new uh, and old media and you no hierarchy in conversation. Uh, yeah, really no, no difference uh, in the conversation between representative of small and big media or between students and professional uh, journalists. Everyone was at the same level uh, speaking very uh, freely. Uh, that improved the verification skills of the, uh, uh, of the participant. With so much expert on the project, on, uh, uh, so much expert on verification and gifted apprentices speaking each other every day, uh, you can imagine that every participant, every participant made a lot of, uh, uh, of progress. Uh, geolocation, uh, reverse, uh, image search, both on photos and video, for example, uh, were a daily, daily task. That increased the use of uh, social tools as, such as uh, Slack, Quartangle, and uh, uh, Newsweep. Uh, from my per perspective, for example, I'm not addicted to, to Quartangle, which is free and that is important for, for many newsrooms. And uh, yeah, um, cross check increased uh, brand visibility with uh, logos uh, attached to uh, uh, every story. And once again, that was important to show that the project was uh, collaborative. And I like the, the, the sentence in blue um, that is printed in the report, um, like a few of them uh, you'll see in the next slides. It sums up very well my global uh, thoughts about the cross-check. We didn't mess up. Um, there was uh, another thing important. There was a, a, a great spirit of competition. I don't know if this word really exists. It's a mix of, uh, as you may get, you know, between competition and cooperation, uh, because there are no scoops in debunking, and participants were uh, under a common sense of uh, of, of uh, public service. And speaking about collaboration, this that is certainly one of our most positive uh, achievement. There was really a a global feeling that the threat of disinformation is so big and serious that we have to work together. If we allow this information uh, to spiral out of control, we will, we will be left crying as the public will no longer uh, know what is true. If people cannot trust, then democracy cannot work. And that was very important uh, in this project among all, among all the participants. And we learned also uh, from one another 
building yes, that's toward uh, LC skepticism. And this is also an important point I insist on because uh, we still have to convince, to convince a lot of our colleagues that they need to learn and know the basic skills of verification. This is essential in a media ecosystem with more and more uh, sophisticated traps. Now we are talking about deep fakes. We are talking about a potential, uh, a potential infocalypse coming. And uh, recently I heard a, a senior person uh, at Facebook saying that, I'm quoting, the technology is getting so sophisticated that there is going to be video, probably by the 2020 elections, where you are not going to be able to tell if this is a real politician speaking or a fake politician speaking. I really don't know if everything of that will happen, but at least we must be aware uh, of that. That was, uh, sorry, that was also an odious uh, success. The alliance of media with news agencies, uh, well-known publications in France, local newspapers, small online media, was generally seen as very positive, reinforcing objectivity, neutrality, reliability, and efficiency. And the number of newsrooms validating a debunk was seen as a significant demonstration of credibility. We had really uh, an image of independence fostered by this unique media alliance. Uh, readers felt that Crosscheck was more independent, impartial, and credible because it included so many outlets. Um, yeah, sorry. <laughs> then the, the visual icons uh, was also uh, very important. Uh, we've seen them uh, before. They gave a quick understanding of the debunk. Because most of the time, the shorter the shortest, the shortest it is, the better it is. And as uh, Alexios uh, Manzalis from the IFCN, International Fact Checking Network, said, we need to find formats for people who are bored, bored with reading long articles stuffed with uh, hyperlinks. But even if a lot of people only read the titles, unfortunately, or do not even click on the links on the, uh, on, on, on the tweets, you must give the right information and the sources on your articles. So we always explain the disinformation, why it's disinformation, and gave the links to verification. And the technique of explaining how a rumor of, or piece of content was fact-checked or verified incre increased trust in the article, but also helped the readers learn how they could do this work themselves. Uh, now here you can see a, a few metrics of the, of the uh, on, social, on social networks. Uh, honestly and personally, this is here my, uh, uh, my biggest frustration. Uh, there is really nothing to be ashamed uh, of, uh, but we suffered from a lack of visibility on social networks, at least at the beginning. Then the support by Facebook um, in the last week uh, through uh, promotional ads changed almost everything, really everything. But this is also a bit incomplete because uh, the newsroom partners also published cross-check uh, cross stories on their own website, meaning that the, the, the reach of in each debunk uh, was really higher than that. So now how to do better uh, in the future. Um, yeah, we had very varied involvements. Uh, and frankly speaking, some participants did not fully cooperate. Uh, even among the most uh, powerful media involved in the project, uh, Sometimes the, the, the lack of participation uh, was explained by uh, hierarchical pressures and rigidities in the newsrooms, 
rather than individual journalist uh, choices. But some of the media had put their logo when we launched the project, then go away and never participated, not even once. So if we had to do it again, <laughs> we'll ask at least one fully dedicated person for a, each newsroom. Uh, we, I've talked about, about that uh, a few minutes ago, we really needed a stronger boost on social uh, networks and the, yeah, really the, the, the project's visibility changed significantly uh, with ad spend on, on Facebook. And we, we were talking about uh, a short format before and we need uh, more short explanatory uh, videos. Uh, we made a few videos uh, uh, for our last debunks and they all did very, very well. So more, more videos. We also need more analysis and uh, where are the tipping points, when and how to report. Uh, it's probably on this, uh, on this matter we had the, m the majority of our uh, discussion, uh, discussions between participants. Should we debunk or not? What to report or what to ignore? Uh, there is the, the, the threat of giving more exposure to rumors. We all know that. And this is maybe the worst uh, nightmares for, for debunkers to give additional oxygen to false information and move them out of uh, niche online communities to wider, wider audiences. We need some more evangelization also. Uh, I cannot talk for every newsroom involved in the project, but there are still so many journalists reluctant with fact-checking and especially uh, debunking. I'm here uh, at the Montclair State University, coming from France, talking to you about cross-check. Uh, but I know, for example, there are still some people in my own newsroom who think that cross-check was more uh, something like a, a, a gadget or was a bit artificial than serious journalism. It's a pity or it's a shame. <laughs> and um, yeah, one last word, but this really matters also. Uh, we that kind of project, we must diversify the topics of verification. We were very focused on, on, on politics because that was the, 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 the campaign for the, the French presidential election. But every time you're talking about politics, a lot of people will always see a bias uh, or a political orientation. So as we are seeking about a future, a future collaboration, um, we all think that we should go far beyond the politics and work on other hot topics uh, like health, education, or uh, environment, for, for example. Okay, 27 minutes, that's it for now. I had uh, half an hour, but let's end up with a short movie that will uh, sum, it, sum up what I've told you for uh, 27 minutes. <laughs> Many people, the day that Trump was elected was the day people suddenly woke up to this concept of fake news. The propre de, de, de la fake news, c'est qu'il est viral. Donc viral, c'est que ça va très vite. Ça, c'est quelque chose contre lesquels les médias ont du mal à lutter. With the cross-check model, the idea was that how can collaboration power a much more effective monitoring and debunking of mis and disinformation, so that audiences can be served much more effectively. Cross-check, c'est né à Google Paris lors d'une réunion qui a eu lieu au début du mois de janvier 2017 et au cours de laquelle des journalistes ont eu le courage de s'allier pour voir quelle était la meilleure façon de lutter contre la désinformation à la veille de l'élection présidentielle. And so we would find content that we thought was problematic and verify using a systematic verification checklist that everybody had been trained on. On a eu plus de 600 questions via le formulaire Harken du public mais on a quand même réussi à publier 67 vérifications en, en 10 semaines. Pour moi, l'exemple phare, c'est l'information selon laquelle Emmanuel Macron aurait eu un compte offshore aux Bahamas. C'est une information qui a circulé en ligne au lendemain du dernier débat de la présidentielle et qui, grâce à cross-check, a été rapidement vérifiée. On disposait d'outils qui nous permettaient très vite de remonter du contenu suspicieux, très partagé, très viral sur les réseaux sociaux. Google Trends, 
a été mise à disposition des, des journalistes et des éditeurs. Un autre outil qui nous a été très utile, c'est euh, Google Reverse Image Search. Il s'agit juste de mettre une image dans la barre de recherche de Google et dans ce cas-là, Google nous montre à quel moment et dans quels articles cette image a été utilisée. The kind of content that we see do very well on social networks is often powerful visuals, very emotional headlines. Je me souviens comme ça notamment euh, d'une petite vidéo prétendant que des infirmières dans un hôpital avaient été malmenées par des migrants. On s'est rendu compte, ne serait-ce qu'en écoutant la bande-son, cette vidéo, c'était du russe. Voilà l'exemple type de, de, de vidéo hautement virale, complètement fausse, sur lequel, effectivement, Crosscheck a travaillé et a, et a très vite euh, débunké. C'est révolutionnaire, parce que c'est la première fois que euh, des rédactions qui sont normalement concurrentes ont réussi à collaborer. Il y avait un vrai sentiment d'entraide entre les journalistes. Il n'y avait pas de rétention d'informations et on mettait tout au pot commun et on cédait les uns les autres. We have a model here that really could improve trust in journalism and my dream would be in five years time we have cross checks around the world monitoring this type of information the impact would be stunning. Right. Thank you. Thank you Gregor. Before you step away from the podium though, we actually do have a couple of questions just for you that came in uh, via text from ground source. Uh, so the first one is, um, tell us, did you have any difficulty making cross-check in France because Facebook and Google are funders of First Draft? Did that make a difference? So, sorry, can you repeat? Did we have difficulties? Yeah, were there any issues coordinating? And this might be a question also that First Draft, Amy, might be able to answer to. One of the questions was, um, because Google and Facebook are funders of one of the key partners, did that, did, there was there ever any, ever any issues with journalists working with the corporations on a project like this? Uh, not so much. <laughs> no, no, no. People were aware from the beginning of the project that uh, uh, Google, uh, with the Google News Lab, and, uh, and Facebook were involved and gave a, a financial and a, a technical facilities to the project, but... Uh, No, that was not a problem, no, honestly. Yeah. Yeah, and that's maybe something we can also talk about a little later, too. Um, another question for you, Gregor. Um, trust in French media being the lowest in Europe. You mentioned that at the yeah. beginning. Is that something new, or is that a shift over time? Um, it's worse and worse uh, in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the past years. Uh, Because as I, as I said during uh, during my, my presentation, you know, there's a, 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 a I mean, there's a, it's not a really good climate in France. There's economic problems. There's a, a, a very strong far right, uh, also very strong far left, and the the, the, the confidence is media yeah is going down every every year, and um, and after the. Um, After just before just before the presidential election, it was very 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 low. Uh, but yes, this is an old tendency. Uh, if, is, is that is that correct uh, in France? Yeah. Right. Thank you. 